Hi guys, my name is Pedro van Gertner and, and I'm here to talk to you about the Brazilian ecosystem. More specifically, how we managed to grow from zero to 12 unicorns in only three years. And actually, this presentation is a little outdated because from the time I submitted this talk to now, where, where we're recording in February, we managed to grow three more unicorns. So we have 15 unicorns in Brazil. And perhaps when you're watching this, we'll have even more. So that's the story I want to tell you guys. And just for uh, you, you guys to get to know me, my name is Pedro van Gertner. I'm TO and co-founder of ACE. ACE is an innovation ecosystem in Brazil. And basically what we do is we have a uh, business unit called ACE Cortex, which helps large companies to innovate. And we have uh, ACE Startups, which is our investment business unit and uh, we started out as an accelerator and we, we managed to accelerate more than 400 companies. And then we uh, focused on seed investment. So we have a, a, a very interesting portfolio in Brazil, more than 19 exits. So uh, that's an outperformer in Latin America. And we also have a acceleration program that is entirely digital, entirely online, and we help more than 3,000 entrepreneurs currently. Just so, and free of charge, so everyone can join in because our main goal is to help to develop our ecosystem. And it's working, <laughs> not only by our effort, of course, but it's working. And just to tell you guys a little bit about the Brazilian ecosystem. So, how we managed to get there. And just a quick background, Brazil uh, covers, in terms of startups creation, we cover 50% of all the startups in Latin America. 50%, 13,000 startups are based in Brazil. And uh, on the last uh, three to four years, we managed to, to get to 15 unicorns, as I told you. Uh, we updated the, the presentation, of course. And we have over 200 active VCs in the region, but there's there's uh, a lot of capital that comes from abroad. So uh, almost 55% of the, all the capital invested comes from uh, foreign funds. Doesn't mean that the amount of uh, investments that are made are mainly uh, led by foreign funds, but the amount of capital uh, is led by foreign funds and I'm going to explain you why and just for you guys to get the sense of the size of the ecosystem where we're at uh, last year we our startups fundraised about 10 billion dollars last year alone which is uh, a, a step up regarding 2019 so we are growing very very strong and so, so you get a context of what, how, how Brazilians work. And I know that you guys probably see on the media a lot of uh, noise regarding Brazil, right? But I'm here to tell you the story about tech. So that's, that's the thing we have to focus. And that's where we think uh, that there's an opportunity, a huge opportunity there. So uh, Brazil is, is, is a very creative country. People uh, uh, lived in crisis for most of their lives. Uh, and the democracy and the, the, the rise of our economy is a fairly new process. So it has almost 20, 25 years in Brazil. So we are a very young nation in terms of economic development which is uh, has its challenges but also brings a lot of opportunity and uh, our local market is very very tech friendly brazilians love love to share love social media uh, you bring us a platform and we'll populate the platform we'll have brazilian memes and in no time we'll we'll dominate that so that's the brazilian uh, folk to you and uh it makes us very internet savvy. We, I mean, 
we, we love our smartphones. Actually, we have more smartphones than people here in Brazil. And we have also a very uh, promising economy. And it, it will probably grow in the next uh, two or three years uh, a lot. And not only due to the pandemic. Uh, and the tech sector, which is the thing that I'm, I want to focus, uh, also shows a lot of promise. If you take the amount of investment and look at the uh, proportion to the GDP, Brazil is, uh, and this number is from uh, 2018, is uh, almost nothing uh, if you compare to the US, for instance. So we have a lot of room to grow in tech. Not only investment uh, as VCs, but also in the stock market, as I'm going to tell you a little bit more. About the, the IPOs in Brazil and the stock market. For a, a lot of time, the stock market in Brazil was focused on oil and gas and retail, the, not the digital retail uh, sort, but the old school retail, and uh, recently we saw the surge, as we saw in other economies, but uh, it, it's very remarkable in Brazil, we saw this the surge in, in IPOs, tech, tech companies uh, IPOing. And if you, just, just to get an example, LocalWeb, which is a uh, cloud services company, just IPOed on the next, last uh, six months, Mosaico as well, Wine, which is a e wine e-commerce, Nailgrid, which is a, uh, a data platform for uh, B2B transactions. So all these guys IPO, and we have a huge line of companies waiting to IPO, which you'll definitely see uh, uh, all over 2021. So uh, the, the retail investor also is starting to have access to investment in technology, which is, we are very, very bullish because until now, only Park Seguro and Stone, which is uh, very like uh, new companies, like uh, the new tech companies, because we have some some older uh, software man, man, management software and, and so on on the stock market. But these guys, they are payment gateways and, and, and uh, fintechs, and these guys IPO'd in uh, US. So right now we're seeing a lot of companies IPOing in um, Brazil as well. So if you take the what we call the five pillars of the Brazilian ecosystem, we have already a complex ecosystem. Complex in the best way possible because we have a lot of uh, opportunities all over Brazil. Uh, Brazil is a huge country, and we have uh, startups all over. The regulatory environment is very uh, friendly to startups in most sectors, and they are working alongside innovators to uh, better adapt the rules and, and, and the regulation to foster innovation. Also, we have a lot of talent in Brazil, and this talent is also being driven by the amount of startups that are being created and, and exiting and uh, IPOing. So people are, are being developed uh, not only by startups, because we also have support institutions that are uh, have courses, uh, universities, that are also helping to, uh, to, to, to bring to the market uh, talent. And our culture is very much based on creativity. I mean, we love creativity, we love to create, we love to uh, um, put business uh, 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 to help people to, to drive revenue. So that's something that's culturally very accepted and incentivized in Brazil. If you, if you look at the VC investment side, you can see the surge that began on to, uh, 2017 and uh, increased in 2018 and then it boomed on the on the last couple of, of years so that's where, where we really found the uh, the largest growth in terms of investment 
And it's not by chance because uh, the ecosystem, the startup ecosystem, the innovation ecosystem in Brazil started out almost uh, eight to 10 years ago. So what we're seeing here is not a new trend, but basically the maturity of the startups that were, were built a couple of years ago, five years ago, eight years ago, and now they are reaching maturity and uh, uh, raising new rounds. And of course, uh, new startups being created with all the knowledge that we acquired on the last years. And so these are the, the, the unicorns that uh, were created. So they are very diverse in, in all the sectors that you possibly can imagine. But they have uh, one characteristic that uh, uh, they're, they're, that they're very important to us. Uh, most of them solve real structural problems in Brazil. All of those guys, if you take uh, from logistics to payments, these guys solve real problems. And there's a major difference from the startup there that were created like 10 years ago. They were basically copycats. Even uh, so, even though that we, we have companies here that are uh, really based on, 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 on other companies, uh, they're very successful abroad. Most of them had to adapt to the Brazilian market. And that's basically what we did to get here. We solved real problems. We addressed these problems and uh, people just uh, bought it. I mean, people love the, the, the new technologies and uh, the adoption rate is amazing. These are six sectors that uh, we think uh, there are the, the most opportunities in Brazil. So agriculture, Brazil is a, is a very well-known uh, country in terms of our agriculture uh, uh, specialties. Uh, we have uh, large fields, but we also uh, are very inefficient in a lot of ways. Uh, less mile, how, how we get the food to the, to the plates and we feel there's a huge opportunity there. Also banking, we have a very modern and a very um, uh, competitive uh, banking system in Brazil, although only uh, uh, about one third of the population uh, don't have access to the financial system. So there's a lot of startups going after this uh, people that are not yet in the system. And of course, healthcare, we, we have uh, over 2 million, 200 million uh, Brazilians. Logistics, uh, due to our size. Education, which is always a problem that we're, we have to solve it. And retail, specifically online retailing, uh, which is also booming in Brazil, as you can imagine, uh, with the pandemic. And that's why a lot of VCs are getting very, very interesting in the Brazilian market because uh, there's there's this huge opportunity and uh, the startups are beginning, uh, the, a lot of uh, the, the startups that were created are beginning to uh, have to expand and have to, to modernize and have their the technologies and have to hire a lot of people. So this uh, money, of the, the, the large unicorns, uh, they're mostly from foreign investors. So if you look at those funds there, the, the, those rounds from C uh, on, they're mostly from foreign investors. So that's why it, if, we, if we take the amount of investing, that, that the amount of investment that is being done, uh, they're concentrated in the later stage. But uh, in terms of um, uh, the number of investments, of course, they're more concentrated on the early stages, where ACE, for instance, is, is based. So one of those investors is SoftBank. SoftBank is, uh, is, is really, really uh, believing the, the, the same thesis that I just told you, and they're backing a lot of our uh, unicorns, 
and uh, they uh, just announced a spec uh, towards the, the Latin American market. So SoftBank is one of the players that really drove a lot of uh, interest from, from the, the foreign uh, funds and, and investors. If you take the sectors that uh, the unicorns are based, as, as I told you, they're very diverse. And if you compare them with other markets, such as uh, UK, uh, US, India, and Germany, you can see they're very much similar. And, but also we have a lot of opportunities to, to develop the, the other parts that uh, are not still there. And uh, just to, so you guys can get a sense of uh, the unicorns that we already have, I'm going to tell you a little bit about some of them. So one of them is uh, 99. 99 is a right hailing uh, startup. They're pretty much a Uber competitor and they actually managed to very effectively compete with Uber, which is uh, a feat in itself because Uber is is, uh, their execution is amazing. And they were acquired by Didi in 2018, which is a Chinese company. So Chinese capital uh, and, and Chinese interest uh, going to pursue. The other uh, company I'd like to point you is uh, Nubank. Nubank is a the, the largest uh, private digital bank in the world. Nubank is, just, is, is backed by several foreign investors and, and they started out as a, a, a card, just a card. And right now they have a digital account, they have a credit. I mean, you can you can pretty much uh, use new bank as, as, as your bank. And they're growing in a market that until recently was dominated by only four or five players. And right now, as I mentioned, with the help of the regulators, uh, they are really opening up new uh, uh, riches, so new fintechs are, are filling the, the, the void. We have Loft, which is sort of the Brazilian uh, open door with uh, some differences, and one of those differences is that uh, Loft, they, they renovate the apartments, they, so they, they acquire apartments and, and, and real estate in general and they renovate it and then resell it. And they're also growing like crazy. They're currently on their uh, Series C. We have Wildlife, which is a gaming studio. Yes, Brazil has gaming studios as well. And Wildlife is, uh, is also growing and, and attracting uh, also foreign investment. So th there's one side of the story. The other side of the story is that some startups in Brazil has, are always uh, are also aiming uh, the foreign markets. So if you look at these companies like Jim Pass, which is a, a, a gym and, and, and health um, uh, subscription service, and PipeFi, which is a, a, a processes uh, processes of process automation company, Vitex, which is an e-commerce platform, Movily has several businesses. One of them is Play Kids, who is also a, a, a leading app uh, with, uh, in US. Rock Content that helps uh, medium businesses to uh, write content. So they, they have their marketplace and they, they have software. All of these guys are going to Europe, going to US, and some of them are going to, to Asia to, to open this market. So. It, that's the result of the uh, of the global reach of the Brazilian ecosystem, because we have people who went to uh, to Stanford or worked on other startups, and and they brought back to Brazil their methodologies, their way of thinking, and they just went for it, and now they're selling abroad. Uh, and. If you, if you take the investment in Brazil, so we have um, a lot of, uh, we love uh, outside investment in Brazil and because they're bringing new ways of thinking, new ways of working. And we also have a lot of talent that come from all over the world looking 
to to start their own startups in Brazil. And if you look at those unicorns I just showed you, some of them are are, are led or were created by foreign people here. So people just came and we welcome them to create new businesses here. So that's that's one of the reasons I'm, I'm making this, this talk here to you, to you guys. So with the pandemic and, uh, and all the things that we're learning, capital and geography are no longer the biggest entry barriers in Brazil because foreign funds are just pouring capital here and uh, we don't see this trend slowing down. And at the same time, geography, which until the pandemic was a barrier, right now it isn't. I, 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 when I was raising funds for Brazilian startups in the US, I always spoke to investors and they told me, oh, I love the startup, but, but I only invest on a hundred mile radius from where I am because I want to follow up with my portfolio. And right now you can zoom and follow up with everyone around the world. So that's one thing that makes us even more uh, bullish in terms of attracting investment to Brazil. So that's one of the best moments that uh, that uh, we feel uh, in terms of uh, attracting investors is, is right now. So uh, Brazilian startups, they they uh, learn how to do it. They learn the, the, the way of thinking, the mindset. They learn the methodologies. We are now developing uh, talent and uh, we feel uh, that's only the beginning. Sao Paulo, which is where I'm based here, is uh, one of the top 10 global ecosystems already. And Brazil is the fifth country in terms of the unicorn ranking uh, worldwide, which is uh, why we are, uh, we are so much, uh, we are so bullish on everything that's going on. And, and why we feel that um, the startups that are uh, above uh, the, the iceberg and, and are, only, are only showing us what's going on because the amount of activity that we feel on the uh, early stage investment scenario, the amount of angel investors that are starting to, to pour their money on this market is, is, is amazing. And we feel that I show you those six uh, sectors that we are we love, but there are four specific opportunities that we feel Brazil is a very fertile ground to, 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 to develop our, our strategies and our, our, our growth um, for the next years. So one of them is ag tech, as I told you, so that there's a lot of technology that can be deployed, both in terms of productivity but uh, mostly uh, logistics and, and, and tracking of food. People are more interested in what they eat in Brazil. And we feel that that's only the beginning. The shared economy, which is an economy that, that, that is already huge in Brazil, but as a country with uh, a lot of inequality, as, as you may know, uh, the shared economy is a way of uh, helping the, the, the Brazilian folks to, to, to get more uh, revenue to, to help their families. So we feel there's a huge space still in that sector. AI, because productivity is a major issue in Brazil, and we feel that AI can help a lot in all those sectors that I mentioned. And of course, financial services, as a lot of people just start to go into the, into the banking system and start to, 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 to use those, those services and they become uh, even more adapted to their needs and of course uh, easier to use and, and to understand of course. So Brazil, we feel Brazil is a huge opportunity to uh, all sorts of uh, entrepreneurs, investors and uh, the invitation I, I will leave here to you guys is if you want to know more about Brazil and how you can participate either being a startup that wants to get established here uh, an entrepreneur or a talent that wants wants to join 
the major startups in Brazil or investors that want to really tackle this opportunity and 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 and, and join this this growth spree that we're uh, heading and that we're in the middle of right now. Uh, the invitation is for you guys to uh, step up and call us and talk to us. That's why I'm leaving my contact here. So if you want to know more about Brazil, about this ecosystem and how it can um, perhaps be an option for, for your startup, your investment or your careers, just send me an email, send me a Twitter or join me on at Clubhouse, which is uh, something fairly new to us Brazilians. But as I mentioned, we love social media and we are invading Clubhouse like crazy. So uh, I hope to see you guys.